Hey everyone, I am so happy to be back here with Stephen Malen. Stephen has been on our channel before and it was a very popular video as we talked about gaming music uh, for games, for all sorts of games, from anything from 2D gaming to Switch type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, last time, and you can see that video right up here if you want to go and look at that video, and it'll also be in the description below if you want to go back and revisit the video that we did first, kind of introducing this whole world of music income from game music that is used. And you know, uh, Steve, why don't you just give us kind of an, an update of where you've been over the past, I guess it's been about f six months or so or more since we uh, first broached this, this, what's been going on in your world. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Eric, for having me on. I'm so glad to be back. Uh, and I, I'm very, very honored and pleased to hear that our last chat was so interesting to other musicians and composers. One of the number one conversations I have with songwriters and composers is obviously, how do I make a living? How do I make income from this? And the number one thing I keep telling people is video game music packs. Like that is it right now, especially yeah. for anyone wanting to become a game composer, because it's so hard getting those first gigs. There, there, there are practical strategies to getting first gigs, but the end of the day it's it's up in the air right it's based on your network it's based on your relationships and if they don't need music right now then they don't need music but what's so yeah. cool about this whole video game music pack world is it's all about you on your own time and your own schedule make the music you put it up as a product and then it starts selling 24 7 while you're then focusing on the gigs the big story the big uh beat since we last talked was um, in January of this year, 2022, I launched a membership group called Video Game Music Alliance. It started very small. It actually started um, as part of a Discord. Um, we still have that free Discord for anyone that wants to come join us, Video Game Music Alliance. Um, and, and pretty much that group cons consists of, a, uh, I guess, about six or 700 casual gamers, people that are really interested, maybe hobbyists, who want to become composers, but usually in that in that demographic, it's a lot of people who just kind of do it for fun or they do it um, at the end of their work day. Um, but there's a select portion of them that really wanted to actually make a career out of this thing. And so I had this crazy idea, okay, what if we focus and actually have a paid membership group that we can on a monthly basis and really practically on a weekly basis, what if we start diving into some of these top questions? And it all started off with business. It was all about how do I start getting the first gigs? How do I do contracts? How do I um, get paid? What should I charge? And all the things that everyone asks. And it, it turned into this amazing little community that started to grow every single month. And here we are, fast forward, it's been, I guess, seven months later, um, and now we're up to 50 people. And it's highly, nice. highly curated people who are all professionals. They're really trying to make a, a living doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been amazing. Uh, we now have monthly master classes, and we really focus on four things. Uh, we have these four pillars that we call it, which I believe you have to be a master of all four in order to have a successful career, a sustainable career. Um, and I actually talk about it in my book, Family First Composer. Um, and it's something that really does lends, it, lends itself to this world as well. And it's the four pillars of composition, production, technology, and business. And so even though we started off really talking hardcore about the business side, what I'm learning is a lot of guys are coming in, they don't have the composition chops or they don't have the production or the technology skills. And so we do need to take a step back and, and make sure that we're focusing on where the needs are. Um, so I think over this last seven months, we've really started to become more well-rounded um, and we're really hitting all four of those much stronger. And so inside there, you know, we have some courses, we have training, uh, but ultimately the goal is to have the accountability of, you know, we're, we're brothers in arms, sisters in arms, that we all want to, we all have the same goal. We're trying to make a living doing this, supporting our family. So uh, it's been a wild ride so far and nothing but amazing things coming um, in the near future. And I'm, I can't be more excited. Oh. Let's now kind of segue to uh, something new that you've come up with here. And uh, it sounds very exciting. And we want everybody to know a little bit about this. And maybe you can tell me how uh, eventually how this, um, this differs and or adds to or is connected with the Video Game Alliance. Um, but 
you have a new course that you are very excited about, and that's what we're here to talk about today, and it'll probably be with the name of this video. Um, and let's get to that. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so I have a new course called Seven Steps to Release Your First Video Game Music Pack, and it is very simple. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's easy. It just means it's mm -hmm. simple. I've I've taken this really complex, scary topic of creating, organizing, sellable music products and putting them on the four major music marketplaces for video games. And the whole purpose of this course is to walk you through, kind of hold your hand through this process, step one, step two, all the way to seven, so that you can share your progress along the way with the pro members. And, and in doing so, you're going to get the critique and the feedback you desperately need just in case if something is off or more importantly, if something could be improved, you're going to have that feedback throughout the process so that by the time you upload your music to these marketplaces, they actually get sold. They actually land sales. Um, and this is something I'm very passionate about because video game music packs are a relatively new source of income. It's a relatively new way to monetize music. And as I was saying earlier, this is something that you can work on every single day whenever you want to, as, as much or as little. And, and part of the way that I continue to make music packs is rejected tracks when I'm writing for custom gigs. It's the demo tracks that didn't quite make it. It's an idea I just had where I really wanted to write a certain genre of music, but it doesn't quite fit into anything I'm doing as a custom music composer. So I literally have a folder on my desktop that is constantly on a daily basis accruing new material that doesn't really fit anywhere. And so what I do is I have regular updates or I just release new packs under new genres and these things sell. And I don't know if this is a forever thing. And, you know, as you and I talked last time, Eric, this is a relatively, it's a new frontier. It's the wild, wild west in the mm -hmm. video game land where there's no regulation, there's no legislation. And so I can set my own prices for anything, which can be crazy I can sell something for 500 bucks or I can sell yeah. it for five. And the only true barometer of success is obviously the, the bottom line of, of how much you're making. But um, it's, it's such a, an amazing opportunity. I'm calling this a gold rush of video game music because never before have we seen such a thing. Because if you take a look at the sync licensing world, you go to Audio Jungle or Pond5 or Premium Beat, and they have set mm -hmm. prices based on the length, or they have a subscription model. And so ultimately, mm -hmm. you are completely captive by the market, right? And the way and the licensing and the, um, the requirements needed for a piece of music to be placed in those types of mediums, right? Film, mm -hmm. podcasts, um, broadcast media, essentially, and radio, yeah. right? there's certain um, legal requirements you have to meet. But the thing about video games is it's all pervasive. There is no legislation. There is, there is no need for those rights. And so instead you go through these marketplaces who have their own kind of blanket license going on. And it is different for each of the marketplaces. That's why a course like this is so helpful to help you walk through what is necessary. Um, but essentially by putting your music up there, it's, you can double dip. You can also use this same music and you could sell it on Bandcamp if you wanted to. You could put it on Spotify. Um, Spotify. You can put it on, you know, through SoundDrop or DistroKid or whatever. You can, uh, you can have five. it. Um, that's where you might want to be careful. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. I, want to, I want to unpack the music packs because most people watching this channel are familiar with music licensing. In other words, uh, Pond5 or Motion Array or whatever, where they upload songs one at a time up to these places. I don't know if there are any of the, um, really the places that that you upload to, like a Pond5 or Audio Jungle or any of those places that allow you to upload. Well, I guess they do have song packs on Audio Jungle and stuff like that. But um, let's talk a little bit about what a song pack is. Yeah, so a, a VGM or a video game music pack, it's an album of any... Yeah amount um, but From what's funny what's funny though is 10 in, to 100 or i think traditional yeah i mean traditionally it's been like 12 15 20 tracks i would have said that a year ago <laughs> but i made the bold move of releasing a 500 track pack back in october of last year 
and it's done exceedingly well. And what's funny is because I kind of disrupted the market a little bit, um, now some other players have come in. They're they're making a thousand track packs. Yeah. And and then they're on the opposite end of the spectrum. You have guys trying to come in there and and acting like it's a motion array, and they're selling mm-hmm. single tracks as a pack for ten dollars, fifteen dollars. And I don't know if it's going to be successful. And this is why I'm preaching from the rooftops. If you're going to do this at all in your career, jump on it right now because the rules are about to come. Someone's mm-hmm. going to come in there. Unity's going to figure it out. Unreal's yeah. going to figure it out. They're going to say, wait a second. Why is he getting 1,000 sales at the $15 price mark? And this person over here is getting five sales at the 500. We got to find some kind of regulation to figure this thing out or else we're going to lose customers. And, and we're, we're kind of living in a weird time in this where... They're technically free markets, and yeah. the market's going to decide what's going to happen. But we're also talking about large game developer companies, right? These are the engines that game, devel- that game developers make their games in. They want a cut of the pie, too. And so there's going to come a time where they start to f- do something, right? Um, it, it can't last like this forever. It's going to, like, the bubble's going to pop. The, the writing's on the wall. So mm-hmm. this is the time to get in while it's still early and still hot before something happens um because as we know with looking at social media or looking at these music licensing platforms Mm -hmm. it's the guys who get in early they always win the guys who were doing audio jungle 10 years ago were making bank and now you barely get a sale a month on Mm -hmm. audio jungle um and 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 that goes for all of the things motion array last year was a cash cow for me you know it was Mm. it was four or five hundred bucks a month easy now it's I'm lucky if it's a hundred, you know, because the way they changed the, their payout system and their download system. Now let's talk about how these work. You said you could put them on Spotify, you can put them on other things. You say you cannot put them on royalty free sites like Upon Five or things like that. The same songs. That's a very or gray you... area. Okay. If you're going Why to is it do so gray, if you're going to do that, tread lightly. Here's my answer. I like to create my own end user license agreement, EULA. Uh, I have gone out of my way to make one of those for all of the marketplaces that allow it. Asterisk. So I have to say this because not all of them want you to use an EULA, mm-hmm. but the fact that you go to my website, stevenmalin.com, and you'll see that I have this, you know, I'm, I'm promoting my game music packs and then I give links to each of these marketplaces. And so I have my own EULA on my website, and that's what all of these things link to. But then you go to Unreal Engine, for example, they have their own, they have their own okay. license agreement. So if that license agreement combats with Pond Fives, for example, you're in trouble. Yeah. So you just I, I can't say a blanket statement of yes, you can upload this and here. And I haven't looked through all those contracts to make sure that that's good. So my general approach is. Streaming's good. Streaming's fine because no one owns those tracks to be used. And it's a different kind of royalty. Right? It's a mechanical royalty. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So it, even that is teetering on gray, right? So mm-hmm. you just got to be Maybe. careful. Uh, you and I were talking before the show that um, one of the top questions I get from game developers, so the, the very people who are about to buy my music packs or they've already bought it, they reach out all the time through email and they ask, Hey, wait a second. Before I buy this, or I just bought this, can I put this on YouTube? Like, can I put this, or what happens when I release my game and, you know, it's a commercial game, they're making money, and and some Let's Play YouTuber or Twitch streamer, Mm -hmm. they start, you know, playing the game and that music comes up. Is it going to get flagged and copyrighted? And Content ID. Are my users, as the game developer, are my users going to get flagged and and, and strikes and all these, right? Um, the good news is I have made sure that I, if I release my music with SoundDrop in particular, which you know goes to Spotify and YouTube and everything, um, I make sure that that content ID box is not checked. It is checked okay. by default. The whole purpose of that is obviously when, when our music gets placed in social media posts and in YouTube, et cetera, um, they want to protect our music. They want us to protect the yeah. rights, and so they will flag them. And, and, and mm. issue strike down. So it's important if you're going to go that route of kind of the gray territory, you make sure that um, you have not checked that content ID box. 
um, or gotten involved with an identify or exactly. an ad rev or someplace like that. So yeah. do not use content ID. This is a world where content ID can't be used. And yeah. that will make the decision for most people who, who say, can I put the same stuff on Pond5 yeah. and Motion Array and all that stuff where they are definitely wanting content ID because in the yeah. stock world, at least, the uh, content ID has become the BMI of yes. uh, or ASCAP of that world where there is a back end now in stock music. So that if, yeah, you may have only gotten a $5 fee for someone downloading your song off Pond5, but it got on some video like mine is now that's got 700 approaching a, a million stream, uh, views on YouTube and I'm getting, they didn't monetize it. So I'm getting paid from, mm. uh, from content ID for that. But this, this is different because you've got, you could have hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of, of Twitcher, Twitchers or whatever they call themselves, uh, and, and, you know, stream and, and YouTube uh, streamers streaming these games yeah. that have your song on it. And uh, if that came popped up every time and, and, and uh, content ID came up, yeah. then they couldn't monetize their streams. And yeah. those streamers would not be happy if they can't monetize their streams. That is, that is one of the core reasons why I personally, because I'm so deep into the video game space, I've made a conscious decision to separate those music tracks. I just don't want to deal with it. The packs are basically stock music for anybody making games, right? Yes. So it is, they can use it is it a non-exclusive, royalty-free piece of music. They can use any of it, all of it. And each site has its own very small nuances, but essentially you can use it in the game or you could use it for an ad, for a trailer, et cetera. But of course, they're buying it knowing that um, they are <laughs> great territory, right? They, what does that mean, right? Because uh, if we're talking about sync licensing, like these are not supposed to be used for sync licensing purposes. Uh, this shouldn't be used by EA Games, basically. Yeah, and you, but you see the, the writing on the wall. This, well, I mean, the, it's not much different. These very conversations, it's like something, someone's going to step in and make the rules eventually. Well, it's not really any different than somebody from NBC for a TV show using something they got off Pond5. Um, there is a that's broadcast exactly right. license you can buy that's more than the $10 that the person's selling the song for for someone's YouTube video where they have to pay $100 or $500 to use yeah. it for a broadcast use. And um, that's just the way that stock works. In this case, likely if a EA Games found your, uh, and EA Games won't be coming and buying these packs probably <laughs> off these things. I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they do. I don't, I don't I know if they it. do. But I would imagine if any of a song that you or any of the people that you teach how to do this got into the, the ears of an EA Games person, they would likely contact you directly and say, yeah. okay, we'd like to, to either use this, buy out this video pack for $10,000 or whatever mm -hmm. and not allow it or used or, or hire you to do the better, better answer yes. here yes. is that they would get in touch with you and say, I want to hire you to create music for our videos based on what we heard in your music pack. Yeah. And I would venture to say 99.9%, .9%, right. Of the users of the customers of these stores, they're indie developers who have a hundred bucks in their pocket maybe yeah. 500 bucks in their pocket. And they're, they want the best possible music, but they are willing that this music has been used in other games before so that they can have the best quality. All right, it's exactly, it, it operates the same way as, as stock licensing. Um, but you have to know who your target market is. I don't imagine, at least in the time that I've done this, I've never once been contacted by one of these customers to say, hey, now that I've bought your music and I have 500 plus tracks, um, now will you custom score my game? It doesn't mm -hmm. quite work like that. Um, all of my custom score game gigs have still come from personal relationships, the good old fashioned networking and relationships. And, um, and they're not paying $500, they're paying 5,000 or way mm -hmm. higher, right? They're, mm -hmm. These are the guys with the budgets. So it's um, two different markets. And, and that's why I genuinely call this a passive income source because it's, you make it, you put it up and you just, release to the winds uh, let's talk about your income since uh you were telling me before we got on air what your income was from these four uh stores and we haven't really talked about it but um uh, from these four um 
major marketplaces, which is Unity Asset Store, Unreal Marketplace, Game Dev Market, and Itch.io. What's your takeaway income-wise this year and stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so in the last nine months, and I picked that number because that's when I released um, my larger pack, the 500 plus right. pack called Game Music Treasury. I launched that in October 2021. Since then, I've made $35,000 in sales, um, which wow. kind of blew my mind a little bit because um, mm -hmm. I've done um, I've done a lot of licensing, stock licensing before. I've done you know TV licensing, uh, music libraries. I've done the whole thing. And, and similar to what you were talking about earlier, it's like, yeah, it's a pretty comfortable two, three, four, five hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. But it's not 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. It's like, what? What are these numbers I'm seeing? Like, it's who is buying this and why? So that, yeah. at, that roughly is about 1,000 sales. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's more like 1,100, 1,200. But in general, that's about where that lands. And, um, and not all of those sales were the $500 one, right? Or, not or all, are... but they weren't all. But I, I will say the vast majority were. Cool. which has been a lesson all by itself that the big packs sell way better than the small packs. Mm -hmm. They just do. It's a value, very, very valuable proposition, right? To pay, yeah. let's say $500 for 500 tracks is a dollar a track. And so from a game developer's perspective, oh my gosh, this will take care of my next two or three games, right? For the next mm -hmm. several years, that's a worthy investment. And they're not buying that thing at full price. No one does. In right. fact, I almost get no sales when things are not discounted. That's a world of discounts. And so typically it's 50% off. And so for $249 or at cheaper price points, if it's $50, $100, whatever, they're going to eat that stuff up um, mm -hmm. to the tune of literally over 1,000 sales. So it's one of those things that it is certainly a marketing play um, on the way that you package things. And, and that is why I've made this course because it's all about how do you position your music as a sellable product in this marketplace? Who is yeah. your client? It's a it's the game developer with a hundred bucks in his pocket. You need to talk to him, the guy who yeah. needs quality but doesn't have, well, doesn't have the money. So who? How do you serve them? This is how you do that. Yeah, and it's it's a pretty in depth course. I'm sitting here looking at it right now with, uh, you know, step one: market research and product creation strategy. Talking about how to plan the the, the pack, uh, finishing the pack, how to create music loops which is very important for for all kinds of music but certainly for for gaming uh step three organize your music tracks into a sellable product this i think is the thing that probably stops most people because they have to actually organize it all and do all that work and uh, figure out how to name everything and convert everything to the right format and all that kind of stuff you get into how to prepare the music plaques for the 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 marketplaces Individually, it looks yeah. like you talk about all of, of, of you know, how to do this, like Unity Asset Store. And, yeah, uh, and just, I mean, you're getting really into detail about all of these things here. If I can make a note about that, uh, this is kind of funny because now at the time of this recording, we're in August. So I recorded this in July, literally like three weeks ago. I recorded the oh. dang course. And then the day after I released it, the rules changed. Of this course. is the world we're living in. The yep. entire Unity upload process literally changed the next day. So I made another video. <laughs> yeah, it's already updated. Um, and I put that in there August. just to say, hey, right, these portions of this video are still valid. But here, here's the new stuff. So this is just the world we're living in. It's literally changing what feels like on a daily basis. Do you want to talk a little bit about the cost of this and what you're offering today for the people who are watching this video? Sure. Um, so... Just for you guys, uh, for listening into this video, I have an exclusive deal just for you guys. Um, so it's actually a 20% off discount when you use the code 20 off. So two zero Z O F F. Uh, <laughs> when you use that coupon code at checkout and that link uh, will be in the description as well, direct link to that. Um, so it knocks off 20% off the course. And in addition to that, um, something I want to do for you guys is it will also give you a $400 discount off of our annual pro membership oh. so that's about half off uh, and the yeah. purpose behind that um, is I I've seen a lot of people come in and they drop off after like two or three months and it makes me it breaks my heart because these are people who if they if they had stuck with it they would have seen the result if you love gaming you love music making this, this is the, the best this worlds. is the next logical step because there's no gatekeeper you yep. are the gatekeeper. 
if you do the work and put it out there, it will get sold. Yeah, cool. All right, Stephen, thank you so much. I will put all of the links below. And remember, you get a 20% discount uh, if you use the link below down here and use uh, the code that we will put in there. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. And thanks again, Stephen, for being part of another great video. I think this is really going to be interesting to people and uh, love to talk about this. So thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay. See you next time.